And um, I'll share that again, that there's something about resetting that has nothing, it, it has nothing to do with a group rate mentality. And, you know, I've, I've noticed that, you know, we don't want to move away from the design of everyone getting what they need individually from this. But I've recognized that when we do, when we're starting to reset, when we reset, it is such an inward thing we've got to look at because um, my reset has nothing to do with Elder Loretta's reset or Elder Daryl's reset or Desi's reset or, uh, you know, no, it has to do with your reset. And so here it is, we've reached <laughs> John 10. And we talked about John 10 just last night where we mentioned that Christ wants us to have life and to have it more abundantly here on earth. I don't know if it was the night before or this night, but, or last night, but what we recognize is that in John 10 verse 10, he is likened to a shepherd because he, exp he says that he is the shepherd and what that needs to look like, what that needs to look like. And, and the reason why I'm sharing that is because when we look at the text, we have to find out what is God saying to me in this text? And what do I have to do in order for me to proceed in this reset? And so I'm going to ask if someone would read John chapter 10, if you will, John chapter 10, and we can start with verse 1 if you will, John chapter 10, verse one, I'm going to find it here. Anyone, please. <laughs> truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Joel ain't ready yet. He, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follows him, for they know his voice. A stranger, they will not follow, but they will flee from, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. That's it. So that's Jesus. It. Wait, that's it. That's it. Let's just hold it right there for a moment. I'm going to okay. ask you in your reading right now, in get what you've read just now, before we even get to the nitty gritty in the, in the, in, um, um, uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of, listening and following the shepherd at this point i'm, I'm before i get to, before i get to you a little redder the, the the shepherd at this point is is seen as one who leads and is an and is an authoritative figure to sheep i want to be clear many times we need a reset is because we have been so involved in so many different things that the voice of the sheep is clouded. Definitely clouded. The shepherd. The, sh the voice of the shepherd, thank you, is clouded. And, and the Pharisees now feel like they are the authority. And the Pharisees could not understand what Jesus was saying because they always thought of themselves as authority. And Jesus is saying to them, you can't be the authority if the sheep don't even understand what you're doing. So sheep will only follow who they understand and who they trust. But the Pharisees felt like they were the authority. Now, when we're talking about a reset, we are so distracted like sheep 
that many of us don't even know that we need a reset. What are some distractions? I'm going to ask anyone. What are some distractions that we have, that we personally have? It's okay. It's not confession time. Don't, don't give me your number one. Give me your second. Give me a number two. Yeah. <laughs> this might, this might say work. Watching TV a lot. That's a distraction. Okay. Okay. Cell phone obligations. Say that one more time. Family obligations. Wow. Wow. Okay. Social you media. Must- Friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's social media. I was talking to a teacher. I went to my son's school today for, to when I said social media. I was talking to my, um, a, a, my, teacher, my son's teacher today, and I looked down at my phone while talking to the teacher, and the teacher said to me, is it, is it that important than what I'm saying to you? And I, and, and I, I was so embarrassed, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I apologize. I, I apologize. And she was right. You know, she was, she was so right. Um, social media. And that's what I was looking at, you know, social media. All right. Anyone else? Go ahead, please. Anyone else? Friends. Friends. Okay. Okay. Looking for two more. So I think that we can be distracted by our own pain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We can be very focused on that to a point that it takes us away from the opportunity for healing. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, Sister Phyllis, I've, I've been watching you for the past six, seven days. I, I got to ask, is there anything that distracts you? Because, you know, you look Ellen Whitish. You know, you got your, you got your chain out. You know, you got your cross out. You look, you look ready for translation. I just need to know if there's anything at all. I shouldn't even say Ellen Whitish. You just look ready. So is there, that's, that's Adventist language. So I'm going to ask you, is, is there anything that distracts you? Yes, some of the many things that they, friends, as they say, TV. Um, sometimes my reading will distract me from following through on what I'm supposed to be doing. Wow. Wow. You know, for some reason or other, I was, I was, I was thinking you would say something like, "No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I got you, sis. I got you. I got you. Thank you so much." What's scary about this family is that when Jesus tells the story, it seems like we have a, 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 a. You cannot reset the thievery way. You cannot reset the thievery way. You can't reset, oh, uh, Spence? Spencer? <laughs> Man, my wife is about to walk the dog and I walked the dog already. She, okay, um, oh, she's gonna walk the dog. It's, nothing's gonna happen, oh. Daryl, I just wanna say this, that it's gonna be a long night, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's going to be a long night. Um, so what you just I'm read, happy to facilitate for two minutes if you want to run and catch her. One minute, please. One minute. One minute. Please, yeah. one minute. And, and, and I'll, just, I'll just take the time for a moment to mention one more distraction for me, and, and that would be sports. <laughs> so just one other thing to, to add to the lead and uh, to the list that, that uh, Pastor Graham has mentioned. Um, I'm reflecting, however, on... Uh, the the whole notion that he just mentioned this whole business of thievery, so you can take it from right there, Pastor. The, the thievery right. notion it's, it's thievery. <laughs> um, if we think, thank you, Dow. If we if we feel that we can reset the quick way, it's thievery. The easy way is thievery. Would it be beautiful, family, if we could just pay a penance and get our sins taken care of? Have mercy. Isn't it beautiful if I can go to the first elder? And, and tell this person what my sins are, and I don't have to do anything after that. I'm good after that. That's thievery. That's done without relationship. That's done without healing. That's, that's, and so many of us, we, 
we think we're resetting on Sunday when we go to church. We think we're resetting on Saturday when we go to church. We think we're resetting when we go into a church situation when the, your reset must have the mindset of a relationship with God so you can hear his voice and he can hear yours and there's in this familiarity we are so distracted family right we're so distracted that we think that there's some other way to get into the gate there's some other way to be um what's the word again to be to to reset there's there's got to be another way but there's no other way except through christ there's no other way except through christ but the pharisees are still stuck on um, uh, um, sheep killing, goat killing, you know what I'm saying, sacrifices, all these things. And they're teaching the people that he is not the way. And he's saying, let me explain this to you, please. What, what, what you read, Sister Loretta, was so important. It says here, um, the one that climbs in by some other way, mm is a thief and a robber the one that climbs in yes the thief and a robber which means there's only one way to there's no there's no other way and it says the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to listen and the sheep listen to his voice who's the gatekeeper the shepherd. There's someone that's opening the gate for the sh for the shepherd. Do you see that, everyone? Let's look at let's look at it again. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, I, 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 it's not written in the book, but you know, sometimes when you read these things over and over again, you get another, another understanding. Look, let's look at verse three. Can someone read it from another version? King James Version, verse three. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. I'm sorry, say it again, please. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and mm -hmm. leadeth them out. Who's opening the gate? From the King James Version. Th thank you. Who's <laughs> opening the gate? The gate. Porter. The Holy Spirit. The gate keeps it. Somebody's, somebody's opening the gate. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Okay, now I gotta, I have to say this to you, that we never say who's opening the gate, but may I say that the gate is being opened for us to reset. Whoever is, I, I'm not gonna be uh, theological and say it was the Father that opened the gate, the Holy Spirit that opened the gate, that's fine. What I understand is the gate is being opened mm -hmm. and it's not by the shepherd. Mm -hmm. the person that's even opening the gate has no authority. Um, um, there's no relationship between the person opening the gate and the sheep. It's when the gate is open and the shepherd calls each one of them by name and they follow the voice. Mm -hmm. If you're going to reset, you've got to know the voice of God. That's right. Amen. You have to know the voice of God. And it gets drowned out by work. It gets drowned out by TV. It gets drowned out by spouse. It gets drowned out by your it gets it gets drowned out by bills. It gets drowned out by so many um um uh, um distractions. Now these things is it's all about life. This is about life. But when all of these things become priority and God does not become a priority, how do we know which way to go? How do we, we know which sale in the store to go to? How do we know which way to turn? How do we know how to deal with some decisions in life without the Holy Spirit, without God with us? We need to be able to hear his voice. And many of, what, of us would rather do 
and then hope we did it right than to consult and do it right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Okay. So if we're going to reset, we've got to know the voice. Also, if you know the voice of the shepherd, it will help you know the voice of the stranger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Man. M many of us are not acquainted with the voice of the shepherd. We just know what the shepherd may like because maybe the porter is telling us what the shepherd may like. Maybe the sheep is explaining in their own way what the shepherd may like. But your reset is you and the shepherd, not the group and the shepherd. I want you to understand that. It's you and the shepherd, not the group and the shepherd. And isn't it amazing? Oh, man. Oh, my, my goodness. We'll get to the book for a second. Isn't it amazing that in order for us to be raised from the dead, it's a familiar voice that wakens us. Mm. Hmm? It's, it's, it's the, the call of the archangel. It should be a familiar voice that wakes us up. It's, him calling us is not an alarm. It's a, it's, a, it's a call to each one of us. And so the stranger has been causing us to believe that we can get in the gate but not through Christ. All right. Mm -hmm. But not through Christ. Okay. How many of us, before we get to the book, how many of us, please don't answer. Is this, this is rhetorical. How many of us have some idiosyncrasies, have some sins, have some issues, have some downright crazy things that you have chosen in your life that you like to get out of, but the reason why you're not out of it is because you think you're doing okay with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just think you're doing okay with it some days i'm good some days i'm not god understands let me be clear let me be clear god understands right he does understand that you have yet you are born and shaped in iniquity he understands that but the gate is being open for you now to understand him you're more concerned we are more concerned with god understanding us but we need to be concerned with us with with we understanding what he wants from us. So he understands that you're a sinner. He understands you're, you were born this way. He understands that you, you have your idiosyncrasies. But the truth of the matter is, is that that is not enough. It's not enough. So we think we can get in. And I want you to know this family, that we cannot make it into the kingdom without a personal relationship with Christ. We can't do it. It's, it's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but we cannot get in without a personal relationship with Christ feeling like if I just, if I just follow everyone who's going into the gate, then, then we're good. But everyone is reacting to the voice. Everyone is reacting to the voice. So verse seven, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am <laughs> the gate of the sheep. I am the gate of the sheep. And all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I'm the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Did you, did you see that just now? Whoever enters, enters through me will be saved. Your reset is so important so that you will be saved. Your reset is not, imp is, is, is not given so that you'll get over one issue in your life and not grow in proximity to Christ. Your reset is for your saving grace. And if you listen to John, throughout John, he's always trying to bring a comparison to who Jesus is, who he's likened to, so that you will understand him. He already understands you. He just wants you to understand him. And so he's saying that those who pass through this gate, listen, listen, those who pass through this gate before him, they're not real. They're not real. Mm. I'm the gate. So in the book, right? In the book, please, if you will, I'm going to look at um, a few years ago, and then I'm going to ask someone to read. A few years ago, I had the fantastic opportunity to travel to Israel. I did the Holy Land. Our, our tour guide did an excellent job 
each day, correlating the deep culture and traditions of the modern day community with the stories that we're reading from scripture. Okay, here it is, everyone. Can someone read page 50, second paragraph, he talked to us. Please, let's look at that real quick. He talked. Go ahead. He talked to us explicitly about the role of the shepherd and its importance to the community because of all the valuable resources that sheep provided for everyone. Mm -hmm. Whether it was the wool to keep them warm, meat to eat, or a lamb for sacrifice at the temple. The sheep and the industry of shepherding proved to be an integral part of their daily life. All right, let's go. Just as? Just as shepherds in biblical times committed their lives to care for their sheep, so it is with Jesus, our good shepherd. He committed his life to shepherd us. How do I feel? when Jesus commits himself to shepherding me and I'm still going in another direction. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to guilt myself or I'm not trying to guilt you, but I'm saying if someone woke you up in the morning and you walk in another direction, there's a problem. If someone is saving you and you go in another direction, there's a problem. If you are in a relationship and you keep turning away from the relationship, yet this person's arms are open wide out for you all the time. There's a problem with that. And the reason why we need to reset is because the shepherd is, is committed. And if the shepherd is committed, then we ought to be committed in changing. We have to be committed. We got to do um, hold it our end of the bargain. There's got to be a level of commitment. So because we're on here 21 days and we're listening, that's not, that's not commitment. Commitment is writing it out. Seriously, writing it out. The commitment is doing the reset requirements. The commitment is agonizing with God that, do I really know your voice? What exercises do I need to do to hear your voice? Should I, listen family, should I? at least for one hour, not listen to music, even if it's gospel, not watch TV for one hour, um, um, uh, uh, intermittently pray for one hour every day. D do I change this for the betterment of something else? Because those who went before me, this is what Christ is saying, those who went ahead of me, they're robbing you and stealing the joy that I can give you. They're telling you to do things in order for me to be happy with you. And all I'm saying to you is have a relationship with me. I don't need you to sacrifice animals. I don't need you to do this, that, and the other. I don't need you to beat yourself over and over again. I don't need you to do all of these things. I don't need you to go into the temple daily if you're not changing. He's saying those who have gone before you have taught you some things that is not for your saving grace. So watch this. So he says, I am the gate. And what does that mean? What does that mean? You find that the man taught us something. I wish I was preaching this, but I can't. The man said, when he calls himself the gate, listen, everybody, he also calls himself the way. He calls himself the gate, which also means the way. He says, I am the way. Remember everybody, the truth and the what? And the life, right? He says, what does it mean when Jesus calls himself the gate? He says, the gate is a rough piece of land that everyone has, every sheep has to pass through in order to get into green pastures. Some sheep, hooves get stuck. <laughs> on the way um they have to be guided on the way he then says to them i'm the gate all, in fact he says he says all who enter by the way is going to be saved 
what the man said after that troubled me. He says, oftentimes, the shepherd will lay down in the way so that the shepherd, so the sheep would walk on its back to miss the rough ground, to get over to the way. You, you, I, I, I said, what are you talking about? The shepherd laid down so that the sheep would trample over him to go into safe ground. And he's telling them that I am the way. You, you, you're, there's no way you're going to get where you need to go. There's no way you're going to reset. For the, for the past couple of days, we've been talking about church. Jesus is not talking about church anymore. He's not talking about sanctuary anymore. He's not talking about temple anymore. Those, though that makes so much sense for what they learned from the Old Testament days. But the truth of the matter is he's telling them now that, that I am the shepherd. I am the way. And then he says, you got to understand that the thief, oh, y'all not hear me yet. The thief, he's now showing them, after telling them that there's no way you can reset without me, if you're resetting without him, then it's a thief that's resetting you. Oh, somebody read for me, if you don't mind, please, from the word, from the word, John chapter 10, verse 10. Let's look at that together. I am. What, I, mean, I mean, he says, what does he say? Um, please read it. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Second here. So are you satisfied with not being are you are you satisfied? with being stalled um even my computer even my i'm coming to you sister wanda even my computer what just happened when i was praying was that this computer was on all day yesterday since i'm telling you family since we started day one this computer has not turned off all right and because we were going into another application, the computer couldn't take it anymore and shut down the Zoom. I already know that after I'm finished this, I need to, I need to sh shut down the computer and restart again. Anybody with me so far? It's important to understand that you cannot restart uh, or reset without understanding that if you don't, you're robbing yourself of something that's beautiful. You're robbing yourself of something that's great. If, you, if you're saying, I'm fine where I am, I don't need to reset, you're robbing yourself of what God has. And, and, and before I come to you, Sister Wanda, it simply says the thief comes uh, um, to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let the enemy take what's yours. Amen. Green pastures are for you. Um, eyes have not seen nor ears heard eyes have not seen or ears heard what god has intended for us can you imagine that's what the, that's what the word says eyes haven't seen nor ear heard you cannot even imagine what god has for you what god has for us but we won't reset because we think we're good we think we're good but what God is simply saying, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But that's the thief. The thief. But I come <laughs> to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. That's what I want, y'all. And I don't even know what abundantly looks like because I'm so stuck on not resetting. I'm so stuck in my ways. I'm so stuck in... Um, uh, what did we call it? Uh, uh, what, what do we call it, Sister Loretta? We called it, you wrote it down earlier. I'm so stuck with bad habit management. Is that it? Yeah. I'm so stuck on bad habit habit management that, that 
um, I'm good where I am. I'm settled where I am. You tell people today, brother, you need a reset. Sister, you need a reset. Look, man, no, I don't need a reset. When the truth of the matter is, Peter calls for us to reset every day. He says he dies daily to Christ so that we can start over again with him. And so our reset is personal. Our reset is needed. But we need to understand who's stealing from us. And maybe it's not the devil. Maybe it's not uh, leaders, maybe you're stealing your own joy by just simply feeling like, I got this, and you don't. You don't. Sister Wanda, go ahead. You, you had asked the question at the beginning about um, what are some distractions, and um, speaking for myself, sometimes church and church obligations can be a distraction so that we feel like, okay, I got to teach Sabbath school. I got to do this. I got to do this for the church. I'm good. And so sometimes it's, it's either it's Satan or it's just our own. Christianity. Uh oh, our own. I'm not hearing anybody hearing. Say it again, Sister Wanda, our own. You can stop it. Comfortableness. Being comfortable with where we are in our Christianity, we think, oh, because I do all this for the church, I'm good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's thievery mentality. Yeah. That's robbery mentality. You, can I tell you another one? Another thievery mentality is because my parents were part of the church or my grandparents were part of the church or my fourth generation, then I'm good. Or because I went to the schools, then I'm good. You've got to be very, very, very careful that all of us are on the same plane. All of us are on the same plane. Whether you went to public school, whether you went to private school, whether you went to so-and-so school, whether you go to church, whether you're a deacon, whether you're an elder. Or so, you're, I am so glad that at the feet of Jesus, we are, it's, we're all on the same level at the feet of Jesus. Now, yes, can church be a distraction? Yes. Um, but we have to be able to decide whether I'm gonna allow that to distract me. We have to decide that. The church can't decide that. A sister called me today um, and said that a pastor called her and asked her if she would do, you know, um, take a, 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 a take up church, a church um, office. And she said, no. And, you know, and, and I, was, I, was, I was flabbergasted. I don't think a lot of people ever said no to me if I asked them to take up an office. I'm just telling you. But the, the, the friend of mine said the reason why she declined is because she has felt that she has been working so long with the church, so-and-so, whatever, that she wasn't taking care of her family. She wasn't even talking about God. She was talking about her family, which helps us to understand that you also got to take care of yourself. But spiritually, do we take care of ourselves? How do we, my, the, the question really should be also, Wanda, is how can we hear the voice of God so that we can continue on our reset? How do we hear the voice of God? I want to share this with you before we go a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, go, before we go over into um, thieves. Okay. So I, I think that we're too afraid to hear ourselves. Hmm. We're, too, we're too afraid to hear ourselves. We are so, uh, I'm trying to find the, the right word. Um, um, since we're so sensory. We're so sensory. And if that's not a word, I, you know, I, I got a doctorate now, I'll make up a word. You know what I mean? So, so I'm, I'm just saying it's so sensory that if, if something is not sensory to us, we can't relax. Some people can't sleep unless there's noise. My daughter can't sleep unless there's a fan going. Oh, you understand where I'm coming from? I mean, we can't hear ourselves think because we may hear the Holy Spirit and when we're so not familiar about the Holy Spirit that it frightens us. Yo, listen, I want to I share something with everybody here. This is a commercial. 
if you if you resist the devil right i need everybody to hear this listen to your reset if you resist the devil he'll flee from you which means if we if we get in trouble it's because we wanted to if if we're stuck in our space it's because we like it there we we cannot re we cannot reset if we don't resist. And according to this, right, the thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy is not Satan that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about people who's getting in the way or teaching you that there's another way to him. You see where I'm coming from. And it's important to know that so many of us who preach this word, Brother Daryl, we preach this word saying that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's not what Jesus is saying. There's people out there that's getting in the way of your reset, and you can't see it. There's people out there that's getting in the way of your stuff. There's people out there that's teaching us stuff that's not real. There's, there's, there's people that we're listening to. There's really just people that we're listening to, friends that we're listening to, our, our, our crew that we're listening to, our girls we're listening to. Um, um, you're listening to songs that are telling you how to treat your man. Songs that's telling you how to treat your man. You know, we, we, you know or men, we're listening to our, our, our fellas in the barbershop. Come on now, that's going to tell us how to do and what to do and what have you. So, listen. I want you to understand that Jesus is talking about Pharisees and scribes and all these guys who are telling you, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him because he's making it too easy. I want you to understand. They're saying, don't listen to Jesus because he's making it too easy. And Jesus is saying, I, 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 give me your burdens. <laughs> my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yet you want to keep you want to keep fighting for a, a reset and all I'm telling you is to fall back on me? These guys are there to kill, steal, and destroy. Me, I come to give you life and give it more abundantly. You see, I always tell brothers, man, if you read the Bible, you know how to talk to young ladies. If I could, if I was dating again, those are words I would use. Who's your last man? Who's your last man? That brother right there, he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Me, I come to give you life. Oh, you understand where I'm coming from and give it more abundantly, though I'm not, though I'm poor. I just need you to understand that if you want to reset, if you want to reset, it is important that you're, you're, you're willing to understand who the sheep is and who the wolves are. There's some people around us that are wolves. Let's look at this, right? Let's look at this, if you don't mind. Um, Verse 11. Can somebody read verse 11 for us, please? Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. No, and please keep going. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the Hold on a second, Wanda. You have to lift up, lift up your head off of your mic. Okay, go ahead again. Is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own, whose own the sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep the hireling mm -hmm. fleeth he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep okay let's pause right there i want us to be friends after this i i'm serious i want to be friends after this but I'm only telling you stuff that I've gone through. You can't hang with everybody. Oh. And, 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 you know, and I'm not talking about young people, right? We're talking about young people. I'm sick and tired of everybody talking about when we reach a certain age, we don't pass that, we don't pass. No, we're just experienced sinners. That's all. Um, we grow. We grow, but we continue to grow. But not everybody cares about us. Not everyone, can, not everyone cares about us. And we have some hirelings as friends. We do. We have, hire, 
we we have hirelings. Hirelings don't care. They only care about what they're getting. You, you pay me five dollars an hour. Thanks for my five dollars an hour. Okay. Um, they don't care. I'm looking at what uh, down the slang for you. They don't. You absolutely. They don't pay me enough for that. You're absolutely right. They don't pay me enough for that. If we're going to reset, we've got to know who we're listening to, who we're following, and who really cares. We've got to know who really cares about us. Um, there are codes of conduct that pastors have. There are codes. If we're all hanging out together one, and, and one is doing something wrong, seriously, they're codes. <laughs> you know, if we're hanging out together, we can say what we want to say together, tell the jokes we want to say, so and so. When people come around, we're back to who we need to be again. I'm, I'm saying that we can't hang with everybody because they'll end up scattering us. So if you're going to reset, you have to know, you have to know um, you got to have people who are accountable around you. And that's tough because sometimes I don't want an accountability partner. I have an accountability partner. His name is Paul Anderson. His name is Paul Anderson. Um, I'm not his accountability partner. He's... I'm, I'm not his accountability partner. He's mine. It doesn't have to be both ways. In fact, it really shouldn't be both ways because you sit there sharing stories, you're in trouble. So if, so, so if Loretta, if me and Daryl are, um, if Daryl is my accountability partner, he has the right to say anything to me to set me straight. And I can't be, I'm not allowed to be upset. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Daryl is not talking to me about his issues. You know, whether he's having an issue at home, kids, this, that, and the other. That's not his job as an accountability partner. His accountability is to care for me enough that I'm going to make sure that his re that Paul Graham's reset is going to be where it needs to be, if, if, even if Paul hates me. Are you understand where I'm coming from? The hireling can't do that. The hireling is not interested in that. The hireling is like, I did my job and I'm gone. That's it. But the sheep ends up scattering. Listen to me. Listen, listen, everyone. He says in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Can I pause on that for a second before we go, before we end off on something? I'm, I'm waiting for something later on, but I need you to hear this. He says, my sheep know me and I know my sheep. It doesn't say that there's an accountability issue here, right? There's no accountability issue here. There's a relationship between the both there now. And I'm not holding God accountable. He died for my sins already. I don't have to hold him accountable. He's holding me accountable for what he's done already. But what he's saying is that I know my sheep and my sheep know me. That means, that means in your reset, you got to know him. And, and you, you should be able to reset because he knows you. Can I tell you what he knows about you? I'm not preaching, y'all. I'm going to tell you what he knows about you. He knows you can do it. He knows you can do it. I'm not a motivational speaker, right? Right? Because, because I wrote the book, and I'm sitting there, and I'm saying, oh, my goodness. Here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm on chapter eight, and I don't feel like going to nine. <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from? I need you to understand that he's saying to the Father, I know that Paul can do it. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I will lay down my life for the sheep. Wow. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why this reset is so important that I've just learned. Just this week, I've learned it this week. I got other people who are resetting that ain't of this fold. <laughs> I got, 
These are the people that are resetting that are not this fold. This is why I'm saying to you, if there's somebody who's Baptist on here, it's not going to save you. Those who are Adventist on here, it's not going to save you. If you're Pentecostal on here, it's not going to save you. I believe if you're going to be a Pentecostal, you're a Pentecostal because, listen closely, because that's the tool that God is using, you know, for your fellowship and accountability for saving grace. But outside of that, I got other sheep that know my voice and know me that is not in this pasture. So, so I almost want to believe that the Samaritans got to remember, he's, listen, listen, he can say that. Remember, just a little while ago, he met this woman at the well who, who validated who he was. Now, he don't got to worry about them. He says, I got other sheep. Wait, I got other sheep, so I don't got to worry about you. Which means also that God is calling us. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. So the reason why we got to reset is because God is gathering his resetters. That's what he's doing. He's gathering them from, from so many different places. And this is one of the reasons why I'm really praying about preaching about this, this sermon at my church at Black History is, do we really believe God is gathering everyone? Because if we believe God is gathering everyone, then we've got to do, we've got to do gathering differently. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so before we land a plane, I'm gonna ask someone to read again Verse 14 to 18. Verse 14 to 18, if you will, please. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it up from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up take again. It back up again. This, keep this going, charge, keep going, the Jews this heard. charge I have received from my father. All right, let's pause right there. This charge he received from whom? His father. His father. Okay, listen. Remember now, Jesus is talking about authority. Who gives you the authority to reset? Who gives you the authority to reset? Who, who says that you can do this? God does. God. Yeah. God, God has given you the authority to get through what you were born not to get through. God says that you can do it. And Jesus is saying, hey, listen, I paid the price, right? But the reason why they belong to me is because the Father has given them to me. Then they said, this man is he's a demon because this man said he comes from the Father. And so they get to the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem during the winter. This is afterwards. And they asked him the question. This is what they asked him. They said to him, are you the Messiah? I remember, remember family, the, the woman at the well went back and told everyone, come see a man that I've met. Uh, this is the Messiah because he told me everything. She's already, the Samaritans got it. They're done. Jesus now is being picked on and asked, are you? And he reverts back to the same story again. But then he says to them in verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I want you to hear this before we read one more thing. 
I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hands. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them from out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. Yo, what I'm saying to you is you have, we have, let me say it for myself. I have so much power behind my reset. It's just that nobody told me. Nobody told me. Everyone is telling me I need to be baptized. Everyone is telling me I need to join a church. Everyone is telling me I need to do this, that, and the other, which is awesome. But what no one told me was that power was given to me to get through some of the things that I'm dealing with in my life. And many of the soothsayers are saying to you as resetters, you can't make it because you were born that way. You were born that way. You can't dunk because you were short. Come on, Spud Webb. I want you to understand that so many limitations are put onto us because we were born that way. We were shaped that way. And Jesus is saying, I got authority to gather you. No one can snatch you. And because no one can snatch you, me and my father have pulled you in that no one, no one, not even yourself, can harm you can't even harm yourself because you're with me which means all power is given to you to get over your stuff man i don't know about y'all but man that, that's some shouting that's some shouting music right there that's crazy you're telling me that the sin that i did today the sin that so easily beset me, I had power to get through that. You mean I could have resisted that? It's just that I didn't want to. We need to change our trajectory and our relationship with Christ that we'll learn to hear his voice and he, because he already knows ours so that we can be familiar with, you can't do that. Don't do that. I got something better for you. I, I got something better for you. After your reset, listen, after your reset, you will find that you are better than you were before. Not that you will have more, not that you'll be rich. Not we, no, that you'll be better than you were before. I just bought my wife a Peloton, right? Listen, y'all, listen, I'm, I'm listen. I just bought my wife a Peloton. I decided I was gonna ride on it. I rode on the Peloton. My wife said, 20 minutes, Paul, you can do it. I hit 10 minutes and I was giving up. She said, just keep on going, keep on going. I went up to 50, I said, honey, I have nothing to prove. 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 You know what I'm saying? And, and she's like, but just keep going. My daughter comes up, dad, you can do it. Oh man, I'm at 18 now. I'm at 18 minutes. And my son comes up, yo, come on, dad, go for it. One more minute, I feel like giving up. I, but in my mind, I've got nothing to prove. But when my daughter came up and my son came up and my wife was like, you can do it. I, I wanted to prove to them that I can, I can ride this thing for 20 minutes. You're telling me, you're telling me that I can do that, but I, I don't want to reset for my family. I, 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 I ride 20 minutes so, to prove to them that I can do it, but I can't, I can't pray with them every day. I can't send a scripture to them. I can't live better. I can't walk upright. I'm afraid to talk to my children about God because I don't want them to think that I'm this, that, and the other, that I'm bringing work home and what have you. I need you to understand that all power is given to you, Daryl, is given to you, uh, Loretta, is given to you, McDowell, is given to you, Desi, is given to you, Tony, is given to you, Johnny, is given to each one of us so that we will reset, so that God looks good and we'll be better. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read this last thing to you, if you don't mind. No. <laughs> It says, and we'll pray, as sheep, we are designed to follow. So who are you following? Mm -hmm. Is the good shepherd your leader 100% all the time? If not, it's time to identify and eliminate the pseudo shepherds leading you in circles and preventing you from your reset. Jesus is the good shepherd family. He knows our individual and specific needs. We need to recognize the voice of the shepherd. And as sheep, we're designed to follow. Stop leading your own lives. 
we're designed to follow. Whatever that looks like, pray to God tonight. Ask him, show me what it looks like to follow instead of leading. Father, thank you for these words. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for resetting. Thank you for being a good shepherd. Thank you for walking in my mess. Thank you mm. for walking in my mess. Amen. And then still making me look good in front of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, that was a word amen. tonight. That was amen. a word tonight. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, sir. So, so very much. We just, we really, really appreciate it. Is you good? Just thank you for the opportunity. That's all. Thank you. Absolutely. Amen. All right, guys. So um, who put that in the chat? Whoever put that in the chat? I, I didn't save the chat, so I don't know what you need. Don't put it in the chat. Send me an email. My email's in the chat. That's what you should be taking a picture of or, or recording. All right. God bless you guys. You can turn on your microphones and say good night, even though you said hello earlier. And uh, then we'll get out of here. Good night, John Brown. Good night, John Boy. Good John night. Brown. Good night. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, Pastor Paul. Good night, Loretta. Good night, Susan. Good night, John. Good night, Ernestine. Good night, Ernestine. Good night.